Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Two Dudes Podcast. I'm Rick, that's Kevin. We got another good one here for you today. Uh, how are you doing, Kev? Uh, shit, I'm cool. Fighting off a cold that I ain't trying to catch. I saw that, I'm good. All right, man. This is going to be a fun one for me and you. We don't know about everybody else. But on this show, we're going to talk about our favorite two people, ourselves. So, um, what's been going on in Kevin's world these last few days? Nothing, just work. Work, work, and more work. So, are you content with the uh, current job situation? Or... No, I took a job, I need to get on payroll. Definitely, I'm not content at all. I'm never going to be content. I'm always going to want more. Hmm. Oh. It's funny that you should mention that. Because here's my question to you. If you went to the doctor today and he's like, well, Kevin, you have slightly less than a year left. For that duration, what would you do? Keep A to Z. Say what? Keep doing what I've been doing. Which is working. Ain't no need to put that that type of stress on people that know, hey man, I'm a, I'm dying in seven months. And I'm but, good on that. But what type of stress? I mean, just because you, you got to check out. You, gotta, you tell somebody you got a limited amount of time to be in this world, they start stressing trying to we need to do this, we need to do that. Oh my guy, I ain't got time for all that. Nah, but here's the here's the thing, you still gotta tell them. Because you, you know. I would not keep that from Heather because, you know, well, I just wife, you should not have a wife. So I ain't got to tell nobody. But you got your daughters. You just I'm dropped down daughter. dead. You just dropped down dead all of a sudden and you didn't get a chance to tell them. Man, really the hell with that. No, I, I, I would rather tell my boys and let them know and let them know that what I'm going to try to do is try to maximize as much time with them as I can. And I know they would do that for me. See, so that we see now nah, here's my thing let me finish All you right. don't tell them they don't know they're going to be trying to hang with their friends or stuff and then they're going to feel worse once you're gone i didn't know i didn't know if i had known i would have prioritized to be with my dad more you're robbing them of that opportunity everybody understands your kids and my kids are old enough to understand what death is and death is a natural thing and they need to know that everybody dies. It's what you do in this life that counts. It's not about running around preparing for somebody to die or stressing anybody out. Because I, I would tell my boys, don't be stressed about it. Look, I know it's going to happen. It's going to happen to me. Eventually, it's going to happen to you. What we need to do is make the most of our time together, have as much fun together as possible. And I would put it on myself to try to teach them as many things as I can before I check on up out of here. And I would hope that like a sponge, they learn as much as they can from me so that, you know, God willing, it doesn't happen for years upon years upon years from now. But when it's their time, they've done the same for their children and their grandchildren. And, and to me, that's what it's about. I, I, I'm not hiding it from nobody. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I could probably check out here in less than a year. I am not going to run around talking about I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. The sky is falling, I'm dying. Make no mistake about that. I'm not. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't know. No one would know unless I actually told you because my demeanor and the way I go about handling my business from day to day, that wouldn't change. Now, you say that you would work. I'm not even going to lie to you. I would work much less. I got plenty of vacation days built up. I would cash in on them mugs ASAP. Um, as far as the money, yeah, I would still work for the money, but it wouldn't be about paying the bills. Bills going to get paid. I would be stacking back instead of things that I would want for myself. I would try to make sure that, you know, 
I leave it behind so that things aren't as stressful in death because that's the stressful part of somebody dying. You having to take care of funeral expenses, uh, all, all the things that come with that, burial. So those are really the stressful things. And, you know, I, I just want it to be one big celebration every day because every day that I open up my eyes, I want to make sure that, hey, I make the most of this day. So See, that's where we that's where we differ. I don't want nor do I need the attention. I'll leave them letters or a video, let them know why I didn't tell them. And that's the end of it because I don't want, oh, we got to damn all that make the most of the last days. That's just saying, but all right, I could drop tomorrow. I don't need nobody around me wearing, oh, this is the last, no. Just let me go when I go and that be the end of it. I don't want all that fanfare, that hoopla, that Macy Parade type life. I'm good. But like for you, that's fine. For me, I don't want the attention. So when it's time for me to go, let me go. So I'm, I'm good on all that. And I do understand what you're saying, but it's it sounds noble on the outside, but it's kind of selfish too. You're robbing them of their I'm not time robbing with their anybody, dad. It's my life. That's the point you better realize. Ah, it's my that's, life. that's where you're wrong. No, you're a father first, first and foremost. You're a father. No, I'm you Kevin take care first, of your I'm kids a father first. Second, I'm myself first. Then I'm a parent. So I take care of self first. Kevin is a parent. Yeah, like I said, you're first, not. I'm you're self. not. You're not Kevin and a parent. You are Kevin, the parent. Once they came into this world, you were the parent. Mm. It never starts and it never ends. You'll always be their father. They'll always be your children. Damn it, I got something in my eye. That's a tear because of what I'm saying, man. That's, that's that Denzel damn, Glory I'm tear. That's, that's that Denzel Glory tear. Nah, I doubt that. That movie was trash. <laughs> that's my damn eyelash. It's on my damn nerves at times. So you're telling me, though, you wouldn't do anything different in life for the next seven to 11 months? I ain't got time for all that because my mind says, gonna be, let me work, let me stack, let me make sure they got what they need, even though they got a quarter of a meal coming to them. They could always have more. But I just said that. I said that with what I'm going to do. No, you said you're taking vacation. All that. I ain't got time for all that. I'll let them get a check cutting them on my vacation time. That'd be another four, five Gs. They can I, do whatever. I, I hate to break this to you. If, if you pass away, your job is not going to cut you a check for your vacation. They're going to try to skimp out on that, and the family can't fight that. Well, like I said, it depends on the company. I know my cousin, when he died in his wreck, his job actually was they show love and last check, vacation. Grand, they put it all on one check. Now, that was bogus. But mine still, she ended up with a check for like 65 or well, whatever. Cool. So it's like, it, it depends on the company. And you're right. I'm not going to say every company about that because you're right. Some companies, you know, they will respectfully handle that. Yeah. Now, the only thing that, but at the same time, you know, the way I, I do things, like I got them to where they taken care of. I even left their mom something or whatever because she got to oversee them. So I figured the best way to get her not to touch theirs is to give her something. So, you know, I got bases covered or whatever, but I ain't got time for that. Oh, my God. No, I'm good on all that. Yeah, but see, you're making it sound like you're running around with your hands in the air. I'm dying. I'm dying. See, no, I wouldn't handle it that way. That's, once, that's, that's, that's not the way I'm coming at it. With. But see, the thing is, I've experienced this with my dad and how that happened or whatever. I'm not putting people, and I don't want to go through that. I'm good. Well, you know, we, we see it different. And that... That's an interesting perspective. And, you know, for everybody that's uh, watching this on YouTube, uh, leave us a comment. Facebook, YouTube, leave us a comment. How would you handle it? And, you know, we're only looking at two different sides of it. Somebody else may have a third completely different side of it. And I would even venture to assume that there are varying degrees in between. And possibly. And then things change, too. The way I feel with 11 months left on the clock may be completely different when it's five months. And that may be completely different when there's five days left. And, you know, if I know the exact time on the clock and I've got five days left, I'm not going to lie to you. 
I'm going to want to see, you know, friends and family, whether they know or not, I am going to make it a priority to go see them, you know, spend some time and, and, you know, just have some good times and some laughs because I want people when I go out to know that, you know, I was somebody that was good to hang around, um, possibly somebody good to get information from, uh, possibly somebody good to uh, just be there when you need them, that kind of thing. Um, it, it, it just would seem wrong to me to, you know, just wait until I drop dead. I didn't know anything was wrong with him. How did this happen? You know, I just know, I just know a lot of people would be hurt if they were left in the dark See, too. You're talking to a person who's not having a funeral either. I'm not having none of that stuff. I just really? keep it moving. Yes. I've been on record saying, I'm, don't near do a service. Don't bury me. Fire me up. Take the ashes. Toss them in Arrowhead's parking lot. And go to Madison Square Garden. Put them in the Madison Square Garden parking lot. Then ride out. Man, we are, we are gaining some insight on Kevin today. I, I, I would have never, I would have never picked that that you would go that route. Yeah, because it's all extra. It's money wasted. I done been to too many that. funerals to where I'm just like, it ain't nothing, It's like a wedding. It's nothing but unnecessary showcase of people being extra. It's never for you. It's for the ones involved. And then I just no. seen like when my cousin passed. Just how money grubbing stuff is to where the hospital gave her a list of like cremations for my for her mom, my my older cousin or whatever. They were talking anywhere from three to like five G's for cremation. Go talking about the more you pay, the more it's possibility you can get all your uh, loved ones ashes. So you mean tell me you go mix me up with Bobby next door? And eh, I ain't got time for that. As I said, do the cheapest cremation. I don't care if I'm mixed with whoever. Save that money because it's a waste. So what you're saying is... Funeral, when he passed, uh, you, Nelson's little brother, when he passed, I think that funeral was down there 10 stacks. And it lasts like an hour and a half. That hmm. don't make no damn sense. So y'all heard, heard it here first. For, basket, for it to go into the ground. Kevin and part of little Jimmy and... uh. Little Johnny, they they all might end up in Madison Square Garden. Exactly. I'm just like, cremate me, put my ashes in my favorite sports spots, put it in the ground somewhere, or hell, don't, I don't want my stuff on no fireplace and you got to walk past it every day. That's creepy as hell. I'm good. Okay, I agree with you on that. If, if you're going to be cremated, you don't want somebody sitting your ashes somewhere and just leaving it there. It's like, what is it? Uh, when my dad passed, my sister was like, I'm going to get some of his ashes put in the locket. You want some? Hell no. What do I want that around my neck for? I look like the nigga. I don't need him around my neck. Hell. I'm good. Wow. Um, no, you're right. I've, I've not heard of that before. Um, that, that, that is interesting. Putting it in a locket. No. Yeah, people put it in lockets, they put it in rings, bracelets. I'm like people got fucking problems. Mm. Okay, so uh, uh, enough of this death and dismemberment stuff. Now you mentioned making money, stacking it back. Let's just say you became a millionaire today. We're not talking about dying anymore. Yeah. Who knows when you're going to die? You just became a millionaire. What's the first thing you're going to do? And what other things will you do after that? I'm going to work the next day. I worry about that on the weekend. I'm not going to change. I am happy with their hands stuck out. I'm good. Now, you know how much I win determines what I do. Right. But something interesting about what you just said, you're not going to let people 
come at you with their hands out and you're not going to change how you are. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if I became a millionaire, I am not going back to work the next day. Now, I am going to do some things differently because we change, we evolve. But what I'm going to do is invest that money in a way that would make me more while I'm doing the things that I want to do. As you know, I am big on movies and I want to, you know, do film and stuff. I could start a production company. Wouldn't have to shoot a lick of film. Other people around me may want to do projects and I would make money off of that as a producer. Yeah, see, people so, don't realize you win the lottery. A lot of times, quick as you win it, you go broke. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't let people come at me with their hands out because I wouldn't advertise that I won a lot. That's all I'm going to keep doing me. Now, I would quit the part-time, yeah, without a doubt. You know, so that, that would be gone. You know, I would uh, get my crib to where it needed to be. Then I'd put my mom in it and I'd buy something else. But that's probably like the extent of it. It ain't about to be, you no, know, you know, I'm in this mansion with motherfucking a, a grotto with sharks swimming around. And, no, no, you know, none of that. Ain't about to, you know. I, I love Lamborghinis. I ain't about to buy one. You know, now, I'm you, still you know what? Houses me. and cars would be the last thing on my list. And, and the reason is I want to put my money in a certain way where it makes more money for me. I ain't thinking about See, no house or no car until thing. I get an interest check. No, that, that's the thing. When it comes to the houses, property equals money. So I could easily say... I win 30 mil at the taxes, I get like 13. A hundred thousand of that, I say not half a mil of that, I could buy a block and rent it out and my money keeps making money. Exactly. Yeah, so it's it's like that, but it's like, but for myself, I'm gonna make sure I buy a house where I can be at and they can be at, then when my time goes, it's still there. Like I said, mom's being in this, that's just letting her enjoy retirement. Hey, you, you, you know, you work, but you ain't got to work. To, you got to work, keep your utilities on. You know, everything else is covered. Don't worry about that. That's just a drop in the bucket for you. So, you know, it's stuff like that, but I will get in the real estate game. But see, like most people get in, they want to start buying buildings. No, I'm going to buy houses, keep it smart, keep it right, because that's always reoccurring money. You know I'm saying the money I get off of that, that's just, BS money to invest in other ways or whatever. So that block or two that I would buy would keep everything going. Then everything else, I'm living off interest. Put some in CDs, put some up for them. Then a nice chunk of just go sit there waving at me every day when I check it to make sure it ain't been touched. Yeah, and that's what I mean by making your money work for you. There's hey. so many different avenues. Um, I don't know if I would invest in the stock market you know those those are volatile things right, I'm, I'm more i'm more about cds and stuff. yeah i'm more about just small businesses that each one can make you something um i probably wouldn't do what the average athlete does and that's get into the liquor game because i think that there's just like too many wines and liquors out there the uh you know what i would get into i would get into what i do well, yeah, that's that's what I said earlier. Yeah. I, I would have a production cigars. company. I get cigars because that there's so many out there. There's room for more. I get in the. I would get in the cigar. Now you know there with there are a lot of cigars out there, but off the top of your head, other than Swishers, can you name a company? That's not a damn cigar. Well, you know, um, it's not, but I'm just throwing it out see, there. the thing is, it's not about the company, it's the brand. So that's where cigars is different. But see, the thing I would do is I take a page from Maker's Mark. They got a cigar that's dip, and their, uh, and their, uh, their, their, their taste, shall we say. I do this. I team up with somebody, hey, let's make this cigar. This is what it is. Let's dip it in your product. You know, we can sell that at a premium price. And because people love cognac so much or whiskey so much, they're going to buy it. I got a friend out that got cigars just because they dipped in a certain alcohol. Uh, well, you know. Well, you can tell I don't smoke because I just call Swiss. Yeah, it's okay. it's just, you know, you, I wouldn't mess with a world that I know, you know. And so it's just, you know, however you want to do it. 
But it's like my ultimate goal would always be, but I had to get like four, five, six hundred mil is to have, bring a basketball team to KC or bring a another radio station here. That's always been the goal in life. If I ever want an abundance of money. And see, so because of your DJ up. background, I can see you bringing a radio station. And, 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 and that would be something that would be interesting. Now, the only difference is if you bring a sports team, you're going to make money. Uh, that's yeah. a given. An yeah. owner's going to make money. I'm just trying to figure out how you would be able to make money off of uh, a radio station. I'm I mean, not sure about I don't know how that works. Sponsorship is where you make your money. You okay. get affiliated with like a serious or cumulus or whatever, and you get them to fund you to where they help you fund what you're doing, and you make money off sponsorship. People paying for advertising and stuff like that. People paying you to come here for concerts. Or, you know, you got, you know, you get your investors and things like that. See, the thing that people fail to realize, you know, if you take from the Jay-Z model, you don't have to be 100% owner. Just be 51% to where you can at least call the shots. Yeah, now that comes into to mind, uh, something that we talked about, I want to say maybe seven, eight episodes, seven, eight months ago, excuse me. Because uh, we, we used to always talk about um, how Jay-Z would just, like, get a piece of something, help build it up, then sell it. Well, that was that business that. mindset. It's a business mindset, though. He, he's flipping it to make a profit, the same as you would with real estate. People buy houses, they flip it, make a profit. He buys a business, flips it, makes a profit. Now, granted, you and I didn't agree with that business model, but it works for him. If you can't be an expert at something, put your name on it, build it up, sell it. One thing is about being an expert, I just think the mindset is I'm only going to keep this for so long, raise the value, and get my money, and then some move on to the next thing. Some people aren't built to see the beginning, middle, and end. You know, so they like, okay, the numbers say it'll take this long. I'm trying to do it in this long. Once I do that, I'll start looking for somebody to sell to. Then I'm out. It's like, you know what he does? Cool. Hey, he's made money. He's, it's been a surefire winner for him. But I look at it like this. If he didn't have the name cachet, would it work? That's the question you got to ask. I, I don't believe that he would. But, you know, that's just me. That's why I give Nas props because people don't realize all the tech stuff he involved in to where he ain't getting out no time soon. He'll let you know because he got money in ring. He got money in um, – I forget, he got a couple other things he got money in that we know are surefire hits that are everywhere, but he riding it out. I'm like, yeah, why cash out? I see the thing that's crazy, what I don't think what he realizes is, in my personal opinion, you got three kids now. You keep ownership and things or staking some things, and it keeps making money. You leave that to them instead of just being like, here's a check. Yeah. That's why if I had the funds, I'd rather buy in some so I could leave it to them instead of being like, here's a check. Because you get that check, it'll go faster than if you say, here's your stock or here's your part in this company. Yeah, that that uh, that does go to um, another thing that we talked about a couple months back about leaving stuff for your kids. And a lot of celebrities said that they will not leave them as much as they think or anything at all because they want them to work for it. And talking about what you just said, picking up off of that, leaving them a piece of company X, Y, and Z, that sounds good out loud until you think about the situation what if your kids you know this happens 15 20 years now your kids are older and they prove to not be so responsible if you think they're going to run it into the ground then maybe you do leave them a sizable dollar amount That's and they know if you leave them a sizable dollar amount they go run through that fast and they will the company 
at least with a company, if it's doing what it's supposed to do, somebody, whether it be a low baller or a jit, is going to give you an offer for it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of the things to where if you have a company or whatever, you give them the tools to succeed. And when your time come and go, whether you step down or pass, if they don't want to continue to going, they at least know what to do. And I, I, I agree with you there. But the other example I was going to leave, I, I, I got two boys. And if I had a company and money, Charles is going to get the company. Darian is going to get an equal value in a trust fund. And here's the reason why. Keep in mind, Darian is autistic. Can't sit on the board and make decisions unless I'm 100% confident that he can make those decisions. True. If he can't make those decisions, then I want someone to handle the company on his behalf. Ergo, the trust fund. They're getting paid to make sure that those decisions are made and he gets his money. So it can work both ways. I just want to make sure that the way that I pick for each child um, goes according to their needs and their abilities. So it won't always work the same for everyone. Right, just go to uh, the Marley route. The oldest is in charge. Remember, that's how they do it. <laughs> that is true, but, uh, you know. Which I still I, question how true that is. Yeah, and, and that's, that's that form of stress putting all that stress on the oldest one. So I, I, I probably would not do that. Oh, I got to make sure this is right because that's what dad wanted. No, nah, when I pass, I want it to be as stress-free as possible for everybody. No, I feel you. So speaking of stress, your chiefs have the uh, stress of being number one again. Uh. They, they don't have that stress. They too busy having people tell them, oh, uh, well, you know, like I told you, they was your boy Cowherd. He basically said, y'all, what'd he say? They beat a team with the worst record percentage-wise in the past 19 seasons, past 19 years. I'm like, but what does that do okay. occurring time? First of all, that's a lie. The Browns have a worse record, and the Lions have an well, even our, worse our, record. A correction. He said one of the worst winning percentages in the past 19 years. Now I'm just like, what does that do with anything? Just two weeks ago, was, the Raiders are going to the playoffs. But then it's like two losses. It, it, it's so – I just like – I like what uh, Honey Badger uh, put on Twitter when our uh, old boy from the, the New England started playing that way he's been playing. He goes, all y'all said he was trash. Y'all should be on Comedy Central telling jokes far as all the commentators or whatever. Yeah. I'm just like, y'all, it, it's so weekly this season how they just don't know what's they because the, I mean, let's be real. The season has been so upside down. Nothing has been X, Y, Z. It's been like C, D, M, A, you know, ain't nothing's been a straight line. Yeah, I mean, in, before week one started, everybody was ready to put the Rams and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Then everybody was down was, on the Chiefs. Now everybody's ready, down on the Rams. Uh, they were talking about a repeat of Tampa KC. I heard Rams like behind Green Bay. Well, but then when actually, the you're right. Playing, they like leapfrogged over. Well, they were talking about the Rams after the Rams put that hurting on Tampa Bay. I just find it funny that I am slowly starting to hear people whisper that Tom Brady, the father time, has caught him. I said, Father Tom caught him last season. He looking like Drew Brees looked last year. It, people, they just, it, it's funny how they're being. Now I'm like, he's literally looking just like Peyton Manning did his last year in Denver. Yeah, that Denver defense got him that ring, though. It's like Tampa defense got him the ring last year. Yeah. And, and the fact that Kansas City couldn't get past the three field goal mark. No, I mean. Hey, I'm going I'm to forever give you grief for that. Past. Well. Y'all got the line this year. They just need to jail and play together. Yeah. We got, what did they say, two of the top four highest-rated offensive linemen uh, is on our line. Creed, 
Humphrey and the dude Smith. Humphreys is one, Smith is four. I need that dude Brown that we gave all that loot for to the Ravens. I need him to step up. I'm sure he will. You have a system offense, so people if he are going to have to. Contract, he better. <laughs> you know, he, uh, his his position gets paid bread, so if he want to get paid. He better well, step up. Shoot, every position in the league now gets paid bread. Well, you know, certain ones you guarantee that your check go be. You know, so by him being uh, blindsided or whatever, it's going to be, you know, loaded. But if he was on the other side, you know, that's so it's just, I need him to get paid. I need him to get paid, but I need him to show that he deserves to get paid. Because we got a good young line, so. Yes, and also props to y'all on the win Sunday night. Um, you know, rivalry game, somebody had to win. Although I was watching the game with Nelson, and we both felt like at first you could tell the refs was trying to dictate the game. They was trying to keep it close for a second. Then I think at some point they were like, we just need to call it how it's supposed to be. Because like some of them calls was iffy. And then it was something that we was like, the cameraman is like right there on that. And you didn't see that. So it was just, I was like, they trying to keep this damn game close. Then at some point, I guess they were just like, let's let it go. And it, that's when everything went sideways. The Raiders are not ready for prime time. You know how we was talking a few minutes ago about how X, Y, Z, C, M, whatever, whoever the hot team is for the week. At the beginning of the season, they were the hot team for the week. Not so much now. Uh, as Buffalo dropped off and it's starting to come back on, Kansas City's coming back on, I fear that for the third year in a row, we've got off to a hot start and we're going to flame out. And I could be wrong. I said to my homie today, a friend of mine was talking to him because he was listening to ESPN in the background. I said, everybody's trying to trash the Raiders, but if you look at their history, this is when they start going down. So this should really be no surprise, but because the things that have happened is like magnified it like, oh, this is causing it. No, this is what they do. Uh, you know, not being bogus, if Gruden was there, the slide would still happen. That's just, it's, unfortunately, it's just what happens. Well, here's where I think it may not happen. First of all, you said if Gruden was here, the slide would still, if Gruden was here, the slide would have already started. We, we won two out of the last four games since he's been gone. The first two, and then we lost the last two. I think if he was here, we would have lost all four. So we wouldn't be five and four. We would be three uh -huh. and six. Nah, because y'all usually are, like, right there with a good record. Then the wheels start falling off. It's usually around this time. Now the question is, are y'all going to tighten up and get that seven seed? Or y'all just about to just slowly just start falling back like y'all running out of gas? I believe it'll be based on these next two games. It's not going to go down to deep in the season. We're going to see where – because it's gut check time already. How they handle Cincinnati on Sunday may determine the rest of their season. See, and that's the thing. Now, Cincinnati I'm not saying they have to win. They're trying to prove they sell. Yeah, and so I'm not saying they have to win. Proven. They may not have to win, no, but if they're they close – if they're close, and then next week, who do they have after Cincinnati? Okay, that's going to be the game, the prove-it game. They've got Dallas after that. And by the way, thank you, because how y'all handle Dallas, we'll, we're going to look at that tape. Well, see, and here's the thing about Dallas. They're benefiting, because even though we beat y'all, we still a tired team. We ain't had no damn bye week. We don't get a bye week until after the Dallas game. Which I'm like, that's the biggest form of BS, but I, I guess things happen. So, but my thing is, y'all need to beat Cincy, to, as Berman will say, to circle the wagons. I think if y'all don't, it's going to keep, the wheels going to keep falling off. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then we've got Washington after that, and then the Kansas City game. So... 
we have to win two of the next three before we play Kansas City in order for us to say that we have a chance to stay in it. One out of the three is not going to work. Yeah, I need y'all to still be competitive because if y'all not, I know we're going to play lackluster, and that's going to piss me off. You mean like last year? Even though it's a rivalry game or whatever. and Because you remember last year, y'all thought y'all had it in the bag. You already know how these division games go. Yeah. That's why I wasn't worried about the home game, because it seems like every time we beat y'all, we beat y'all at Arrowhead. Turn around and lose in Vegas or in Oakland. You've only beaten us once in the past couple of years, so nah. you got the one win. Thursday night we, game when we were we still when we, win. we've been putting our foot on y'all next since Thursday night games when we we have had two Thursday night games in a row where we beat y'all. One of them was that damn game that kept having an untimed down from a couple years back, and then one of them was a prime time game. So it happens. That's why I was hoping that we would wear our uh, uh, throwbacks, but I see how it is. I was surprised we came out in all white. But I did you get did, could were you ever watch that video I sent? Uh no, I have not watched that yet. Okay, well I put it on my on my page or whatever. But I just love how the homie that's from here that went to the game as a Raiders fan and was like, man, it was like I was at a home game with so many Chiefs fans. But see, I heard a lot of people say that, and you know, that was the one thing about them moving to Vegas that I feared because it's a tourism spot. So people from all around are going to be able to come at all times. Um, so you're going to get that. If you've got a fan base that's as strong as Kansas City's, there's going to be people that want to go to Vegas to see a Chiefs Raiders thing, game. We, the, I've noticed the fans travel to any game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ones, Chiefs fans travel know, well. We, some, some games we swallow the – home team. This was one of them. I know when Ben went to the last game San Diego had in San Diego, well, he said we was three that, to one. That's San Diego. They never really had a home team. But still, regardless, when we went to their stadium, we had them beat three to one. Yeah, I mean, that's why e even now that they're in Los Angeles, they still didn't have their own stadium. They shared it with the Rams, so yeah, well, you talk so about a team without a fan base. But, you know, L.A. does it with all their teams. They make them – the Clippers are breaking the mold by building their own, and they – and the Lakers are actually upset about it, which I'm like, that's dumb. But, hey, it is what it is. Oh, my bad. Crypto.com, you know, arena. Yeah, I'll get to that mess in a minute because that's stupid as hell. But, you know, going back to, like, the, the Rams and the, uh, and the Chargers, have you noticed that the NFL is pushing Los Angeles down our throats? And, yes, I get that yeah. the, uh, Los Angeles is the stadium where they're going to have uh, the next Super Bowl. This is the NFL's $400 billion stadium, yada, yada, yada. Okay, we got thing. it. It's not about the Super Bowl. That's what everybody's tripping off of. It's not about the Super Bowl. It's the market. L.A., Chicago, New York, those are markets that will always have all sports. And L.A. not to have a team for so long, it was like a crime. But unfortunately, them L.A. fans are bougie and don't care about that. That's why they went this last time. You see, they went the celebrity route to try to get all celebrities on board to get the, you know, give everyday people to vote to get a team. And they failed. It took for somebody who wanted to relocate to go there. It wasn't for uh, the dudes or Cronky, whatever his name is, to have an opportunity to relocate. The Rams would still be in St. Louis right now building that arena by the water side. If it wasn't for that, L.A. still wouldn't have a football team. But it, like I said, no, I said, it was about the market. That market brings something. in too much money not to have a team. Well, okay, so here's my question. All right, have you ever had one of those weekends where you want to do something and something else come up and you decide, which one will I do? Which one can I do? Yeah, and you, how often have you had that? It just depends. I mean, there's times where I got, I might do something Saturday and do something different Sunday. I'll be like, I go no, here, no. go there. They, they, they both happening on the same day at the same time, that kind of thing. And you right. got to pick one. Yeah, I've had that before. Everybody's had that. Yeah, but one, that's once in a while. Multiply that by four things going on. 
and every day. Well, that's thing, it's not that's California. Sports, that's California. So yeah. people but don't they have the people for it. They have enough people to where you don't feel anything. You could literally, it's been times there where they've had where the Lakers play on Sunday at like noon and then the Rams are playing Sunday night or they're playing the afternoon game. And just many people will be at the Stable Center. Hell of people will be, you know, there or whatever. Granted, you notice they'll never say the Rams attend. It's going to be the Rams have sellouts, but they have at least three fourths of the stadium full. Yeah. I've never watched the game and they'd be like, the attendance is. When you watch here, the attendance is, you never hear that at the Rams game. That's what I was going to point out. Now, you see when they have games at Arrowhead, obviously they got the blimp, so the cameraman can look at the entire bowl, and you can see it's filled all the way up. When have you ever seen the cameraman, and obviously you can't do it from the outside of their stadium, but inside, when have you seen the cameraman go all the way up to the top level and just pan around the whole stadium? Or you see, like, when they coming in, and then they zoom it out, but you never see like a, a 360. Or exactly. That's that's no surprise. But at the same time, it's LA, they're more indoors versus outdoors. If you watch highlights of a Dodgers game or hell, an Angels fucking game, you ain't seeing nothing field. So that's really no surprise. But the thing is, when you got a city that have over a million people, you can facilitate and feed every team. Because think about it whether it be the Raiders, the Chiefs, they don't need a sellout to make money. So you don't right. always have to have a sellout. You get a sellout, you're just making extra money hand over fist. As long as you keep it probably about 60 70% occupied all the time, you're making money. Now, when you get to where you below half, that's when it gets shaky. That's why you saw a lot of teams at some point it was like, no, nah, we're letting fans back in. And you notice they always started like, 30 to 40% of the fan occupied can come to the stadium because they want to give above that median to where they can make money. Yeah, also, do you know what tickets were selling for for the game on Sunday night? I know shit was down there at six, seven hundred, five hundred. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it could have been all red in that stadium. For all I, I, I ain't got that kind of bread. As long as I was amazed at how many people was there. You had to have your vaccination to get in. I give people props that was at the game. Yeah. One of these days, though, just so I can, you know, peruse the club, come on out on the 50-yard line, watch a game, all that good stuff, and just say I was there. Every time they showed it, you would see Raiders players. You see, like, hella Chief, uh, I mean, Raiders fans, the hella Chiefs fans just scattered. And I was just like, Damn. That is a lot of damn KC fans up in there. It yeah, was dope and, at the same time. It was just like, damn. And like I said, there's like five or six teams that travel really, really well. Um, to some degree, Raiders fans travel well. We've got no choice because we've had three homes over the last 20 years. Um, Steelers fans, they travel really well. Um. God, the other two teams that I was thinking of that escapes me right now. I but think Green Bay fans do. Because when they when we played the Packers the past two years, they was all over the fucking plaza. You may be right. They, I, 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 w- I won't say Patriot fucking, fans because I think that was more of a bandwagon thing. I saw so many fucking uh, Brett Favre jerseys and Aaron Rodgers. That shit was sickening. I'm like, if you're a true fan, wear your Leroy Butler jersey at one of the best safeties that don't get credit. Wear that jersey at. Yeah, wear your Shannon Sharp. I mean, your Sterling Sterling Sharp. Sharp. Yeah, yeah. Shannon be mad. I didn't play for no Green Bay. Yeah, so ah. just. Well, what's funny about us is people know our fan base, know we travel, we there, but you'll never hear them mention it unless they're talking about a game. They'll never just freely. Best fan bases, you'll never see us talked about. But if they're talking about the game, oh my God, look at all these Kansas City fans here. Nah, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about Kansas City's fan base when it comes to tailgating. See, key word, tailgate at Arrowhead. You're not hearing them talk about us traveling and doing that. Like yeah. when we was playing all them games against the, what, three, four years ago against the Texans in the playoffs, droves of people was in that stadium to where, again, it was more of us than them. 
and we started tailgating in the parking lot and stuff. So it's it's funny, you know. the The respect is is fickle how you get it, but it's like then like Honey Badger, the thing he put on Twitter, he was like, you know, national anthem going. I'm expecting to hear that everybody shout Raiders. He said when they shouted Chiefs, he was just like, I couldn't believe it. And sadly, I think that was his first time really paying attention to the fan base after he made that dumbass comment. Now, now I'll say this. They don't say Raiders. They don't say any other team at any other. That, that's an arrowhead thing right there. Everybody else says home of the brave, no matter what stadium you go to. And see, that's the thing. I don't think he realized the moment that that is and to be in a rivalry stadium, it finally was like, let me tap on your shoulder to show you this is what it is. Yeah. Now, going I heard, to – I saw the video and it was like – I was like, wow, that was, that was crazy. Speaking of crazy, let's go to this L- L.A. Forum thing. Or I guess you could say – the stadium that used to be called the Forum. Now, what did you say it was going to be I called? Mean, it ain't been the Forum since they built a new one. It's always been the Staples. Well, Staples Center. So I think the Forum is still up. I don't think they bro, tore it down. Remember, I'm old school. So, you know, yeah, well, you I'm all about that Forum building. action. Yeah, you need to move to the new building. I'm going to call it Staples then. I, I can't I can't call it cri- Crypto. You need to deal with the naming rights. That's that's the way of the world. And, and I get that. Staples, I get that. Center. Naming rights is fine. The name that they're giving it is not fine. It's naming rights. The name of the company is that. So that's what it's going to be. Look how long our shit is now. GA, what? Arrowhead Stadium, GHA Field, or GHA Field of Arrowhead Stadium. Either way, that, go That's just like uh, not in Vesco Field at Mile High, but now it's called Empower Field at Mile High. Because this year they yeah. changed the naming rights. What is it on? Um, because I, I haven't talked to him. I need to talk to him. Tim went with his son Monday for a field trip at Arrowhead. Punk ass, that's the field trip he go on. Just a straight dad move on that one. But he was I like, ain't mad at him. Yeah, I ain't either. I was jealous. But he said, you literally see where all that GHA money went. He said, the shit they did is dope that if you ain't in the stadium, you don't see it. It's like they, yeah. the, and what makes it matter? We just did some dope renovations. And, you know, got some tax money. But, you know, when you get that check, a hundred plus mil, you know, spend it. Spend it and spend it some more. That's one more reason why I like running. Because when we have those arrowhead runs, you get to go inside the the, uh, stadium and everything. I'm not even a Chiefs fan, but there's nothing quite like being in arrowhead on the 50-yard line. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any feel, but some have that, that nostalgia. Like, you know, ours, Green Bay. You know, I even give it the Cowboys with they stadium. Philly. You know, just some of them just got that, you know, I would say the original Giant Stadium, not that new shit, but the the first one, you know, with Parcells was coaching that. Yeah. That had it. You know, just some of them just kind of got Soldier that, Field. That I would say out. Soldier Field. Yeah, I was I was trying to think I in my mind I was going up the, the highway and I couldn't think of what team. But yeah, Soldier Field is another one. And, you know, they're supposed to be tearing that down and building something else. I'm like, why? And I've been in Soldier Field. It's nice. Their VIP section is nice. And see, that's where I would say that I would side with Kansas City than Chicago. You renovate. You don't tear yeah. it down. Now, what's funny, they can tear Kaufman down. I don't care. Build it downtown like you want to. I don't give a fuck. Give us more parking lot of space. We need that. And they, they would never do that. Kaufman's got a just as big a history as Arrowhead. And one more championship. They are on the – what do they say? <laughs> the lease is up in 2030, I think. And the motherfucking owner is already looking at spots downtown trying to see where it could be smart to do it because everybody, the whole thing is downtown stadiums. Man, go somewhere with that shit. Downtown stadiums are for new cities. Everybody else's stadiums are outside of their damn city. People don't Bro. realize that, like, my homie tried to point out, man, y'all ain't independent, y'all ain't really in Kansas City. Motherfucker go to every stadium, I guarantee less than 20% is actually in the actual city 
They're Dallas. Still the city. Dallas is in Irving, Texas. Exactly. Uh, San Francisco is actually in. God, I forget where they're at. It's just outside of San Francisco. Yep. So they're yeah. like Santa Barbara or some shit or whatever. Santa Clara. That's where it is. Yeah, Santa Clara. No, Santa something. Yeah. So you know, very few teams are in the actual city. Uh, like the, you you, 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 you mentioned the uh, Giants. They're in the New Jersey mm-hmm. Meadowlands. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, very few teams actually play in the city. And I understand why some owners would do that, to give another city some love, too. You, you don't go by that name, but you can play in that stadium. And they might have found a more prime piece of real estate in order to uh, put their stadium in there. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't really care for that either, but it is what it is. But I'm I'm not really worried about that because independence is what, like, you know, a half a walk to Kansas City. Exactly. Where that is. So I my home and say that I look at I'll be like, so we gotta go to independence for our team. You gotta travel fifteen hundred miles for yours. No, it's right further than that, California to here. Uh that's 1,600 miles, but, you know, it's all good. Anyway, I just I just can't wrap my head around back to the uh, Staples Center, crypto.com or whatever it is. The world kind of changed. These business names, they're not so prim and proper. I mean, you go to a business meeting now, somebody's going to have their hair dyed, tattoos on their face, tongue piercings. Yeah. The, the – the world that you're from doesn't exist anymore. Let's be happy that a marijuana company, not yet, it's coming, hasn't bought name and rights to something. It's going to uh, go. Snoop is getting ready to buy a piece of Heinz Field. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, and that's, that's the thing, thing about it. Welcome Somebody to Pittsburgh. Day, you hey, see. welcome to Pittsburgh at Purple Urkel Stadium. <laughs> Or you might be, hey, this, uh, what is it, Kush Arena, you know, just. Yeah. When a motherfucking daiquiri spot put their name on New Orleans Arena for the basketball team, what is it, I forgot the, it's actual franchise, I was like, really, daiquiri? So it's just, you might as well just get ready. Yeah, I mean. Lucky ain't nothing I, called I'm, Trojan Stadium. I'm, I'm good with naming rights. It's just that some of these names just blow me away. You know, you, you, we lucky that we ain't had a Trojan Stadium. You know, we some of these names that could be out there for some of these companies that make money that just don't want to get in the sport in the arena. We lucky right now, but as time goes on, especially with this whole Bitcoin being big or whatever, you about to see more and more because like you got motherfucking um minor league teams selling name and rights. Hell, and all that quintiles. We was advertising, we was buying seats at a high school football game, putting our names on the seats. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I re- and I remember that, too, from the queue. High school and minor leagues have been doing that for a long, long time, though. Longer than the saying, NFL. It's, it's, it's crazy, and it's going to get bigger. Like, we was paying, what, I think down there 7500 for the T-bones just to do the tarp for the T-bones? Yeah. That's some of crazy. some of those minor league teams now they have like patches or whatever to the company that uh, sponsors them, kind of like yeah. the NBA does in preseason. And just like what us, you know, T Bones are no more, but they've came back as the Monarchs, and now they've signed a deal with the uh, the Negro League Museum. Ain't that some shit? Very interesting. Yeah, but, I thought yeah. it was disrespectful. I don't look at it as disrespectful. I think of it as, you know, a way of uh, keeping uh, the past alive also for people that want to know the history of the Negro Leagues. My thing is, when the museum was struggling and needed money, where was them motherfuckers then? But now they can make money off of it and put that brand out there. They want to be playing. They want to come be a partner with us. No different than... Naming rights on an NFL stadium. Yeah, GEH, A, QRSTU, whoever they are, they gave all that money to Arrowhead 
but you don't think they make in a little bit on the back end? I'm sure they are. All these commercials and stuff going on and everything. Proud partners of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I, I, what is it? One thing the Kansas City did do was dope because they let you pay, we probably pay a same amount of money and you could buy a brick and they you know engraved the information as you walk into the stadium. That was dope. We already got that, bro. Oh, I man, this is when we did the remodel and everything. We didn't have that. Oh, okay. When they did the remodels and they did all that. See, that's how people got realized that stadium hadn't been remodeled in. I may have been in diapers, feel like. <laughs> so. No, it ain't been that long, but it's, it's. You said what? It ain't been that quite that long, but yeah. I, it felt like it. I remember I when I got the, the uh, got the email for Allegiant Stadium. Hey, do you want to buy a brick? brick really yeah if, if you're how a hardcore much? raider fan and you go through certain channels you can get perks like that how much oh i didn't buy one so we'll just put it that way <laughs> oh, okay, okay. it, it, it would have been a couple hundred just for the little brick they had three sizes your basic wow. brick a couple hundred dollars you can move up to five hundred dollars and it'd be about the size of a plaque um and then you've got one that's I don't even remember. I didn't. I don't even remember how much it was, but it was too damn much. And and that'd be part of them big slats in the uh, in the building. But now nah, I, 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 I couldn't hang. That. I don't even want that kind of attention. Hey, at one point I did uh, think about actually buying a, a piece of the uh, Green Bay Packers because you know every now and then they put that. some stock on that. sale. But I just couldn't. Betray my team like that. You should have been betrayed you, but that's a whole. <laughs> Not yet, they have. So, Not yet. We, we got a couple more my games. My question to you: How you feel right now with your bet with Tony? Nervous. How you feel about your bet with me? <laughs> I don't know if I'm as nervous yet. Like I said, I need a couple weeks on that. Like I said, these next four games, if we go two and two, I'm okay with that. Three and one, I'm okay with that. If we go one and three or oh and four, I'm nervous. Are you going and four? It's over. It's yeah, done. That's that's true. Because if we so can't beat the Washington football team, yeah, if we can't beat the Washington football team, we we ain't gonna win out. Hey, they did just beat Tampa. Yeah. And then we got Cleveland after we play y'all. Denver, I think we can win that one again. Indy, we can win that one again. And then we owe some payback to the uh, Chargers. Carson Wentz is playing nice. I don't know. And that run game is solid. I don't know if you can beat Indy. Cleveland, you should be able to beat. Should be able to. We beat them last year in their own crib in the snow. But it's all going to come down to where are the Raiders' mindset. Because if they're, like, giving up on the season – it's over. If they like, hey, they, they look, look like, you know, all jokes aside, all BS aside, middle of the third quarter, they look deflated against us. It's like they just didn't give a fuck anymore. It happened right after Deshaun Jackson did that fumble. That's where I think everything went downhill. Because you remember, they came, they came out, start the third quarter, march down the field, touchdown. All right, it's 21-14. We can get back in this. All right, we get the ball back after a stop. Throw that long pass to Sean Jackson. We can retire this game. Oh, no, he fumbled. It's over. Kansas City got that ball back, marched down the field, score. Got the ball back again, marched down the field, score. We had no shot. The two things that deflated us were Deshaun's fumble and then y'all's fake uh, punt. Which we never do, so I was surprised. We, I was like, That's how I knew Andy man. pulled out all the stops. Yeah, it's a rivalry <laughs> game, I think. He was trying to make a statement, and the same time thing, he was trying to get the get the team back fired up, trying to relight that fire. No, here's here's exactly it. what he was thinking. Oh, Gruden is going to drive that bus around the stadium, huh? Fake field goal. <laughs> that's that's what I he was thinking. Front. When um when the game, and I said that was you motherfuckers get for that bus ride. 
Oh, I think they said that to him last year after the uh, the game in Vegas. Yeah, it was, I mean, it left a bad taste in the mouth. You know, that, that was just disrespectful. Take your win and go ahead. Don't 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 do, don't do the ride around. That, that was disrespectful. I, I honestly believe that Basachi Basaccio uh, would um, he wouldn't do anything like that. That's that's kind of a dick move. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it was that 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 was just a bad time. That that set the bad that set a bad time. I mean, I've taken a victory lap around Arrowhead Stadium, but that's because it was re- race, that's it was it was required that we run around there. Run the race, that's different. Yeah, I've stomped on the fifty yard line. I've been hand in hand with a few of those cheerleaders. Yeah, that's about your, the most defense y'all get. Hey, don't knock my defense. Um, we we played a hell of a first quarter. Couple minutes. <laughs> oh, all right. Enough of them. I don't want. I don't want to talk about that no more. That brings me, you know, nightmares. Because you know, I just knew Sunday morning I'm gonna drink good after tonight. Now I am. I am nervous. You know, depending on how these next three games go, I might just you know go to the liquor store and pick up Tony stuff before the game. Yeah. Um... I went over to Nelson's to watch the game. I was like, yeah. Gave him a hard time about his eagle. He was like, man, I need to get you what I owe you. I said, yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. Oh, uh, he ain't we, got you yet? Nah, because we, uh, we've been hitting and missing with our work schedules. But he, like I said, I got my ball at Apple Crown room. I know he's going to take care of it. He's like, he's probably going to do it this Friday. He just forgot what it was. I was like, it's the Uncle Nearest. He looked up and was like, oh, okay, I got it. I said, yeah, I know you do. Oh, he, he, if he forgot, all you have to do is say 66. That's what episode number he needs to look up on YouTube. It's right there for you. Yeah, so he's going to take care of me and worry about it. He took care of me on the last one. It's like I took care of him when I lost that tournament bet. Damn it. All right, before we close it out, um, you and I talked about it before. Uh, Although I won't get it in that extravagant box, I will uh, go ahead and pick up that Will Smith book, and uh, I'll tell you how good, bad, or indifferent it is here uh, this weekend. <clears throat> in my in my quest to start reading more, and, and you know, watching less TV, <clears throat> I'm gonna start there, pick up the pages, and I'm see what he's talking about. Read. I've been told too, because. <laughs> That's what I wanted no, to know. A good read. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I hope not. I, I really do. Um, I know he's put a lot of, of it out there in public, but I think a lot of that has been more or less shock value shit. So I'm, I'm hoping we can really get to the point of who he is. Kind of no, like, no, no, like that documentary. Yeah, you watch that doc. It, it's giving you an insight to the book to where – he don't pull. He don't hold back no punches. He he gets down to it. Good, good. All right, you got anything else before we uh, slide on out of here? Uh, only thing I got, I just I saw it when I was working. I put it on Facebook, and I feel like I just talk about it. So I was reading two of the three guys that. I guess we'll say allegedly killed Malcolm X about to be released from prison. About to be exonerated from all charges. I saw that too. Yeah, one has died back in like I think it's at 2016. The other one is like in his 80s still living. So I'm reading the article from a legit, you know, paper or whatever. They don't say why they're getting released. They don't say if DNA or whatever proof, they don't show anything. They just claimed that the one guy who's still living was at home on the couch. He had just had leg surgery or something or whatever. Tell me there's no way he could have did it. I'm like, if you ask, that would have shown, it just, basically one plus one ain't equaling two. So I'm just like, why are y'all about to let, even though dude is 80, he can't do nothing or whatever. You letting them out, but you're not indicating why you're letting them out. It's like, you're just letting them go. You about yeah. to make your city pay millions of dollars to a dying man, basically, when you're not saying why. 
I want to know why. Why is he getting out? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, it was a DNA. What? How are you figuring out that he don't that he's free? He should be free or whatever. Well, all of a sudden now. So it's gonna be interesting if that ever gets revealed. But I'm just like, now y'all want to release him now? It just it's saying it's just like a deterrent or something. I believe you're right because we don't have any facts one way or the other. As in what so caused like, him to be charged guilty and then what is it that uh, you found you're exonerating? Exactly. That's why I'm like, the, the system needs to be revamped in so many ways. But it just, it's... Well, the system is shot to hell. I mean, you could rob a liquor store and do more time than killing somebody. Yep. Because the you... three guys that killed that brother, I got a feeling they about to get slapped on the wrist. Yeah, I mean... The um, I know you remember the dude that uh, was one of the people, one of the ringleaders when they stormed the um, Capitol building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to get 41 months. Yep. Now, let me ask you this, in all honesty. If the roles were reversed and it was a black man that did that, do you think it would just be 41 months? Keep in mind, that's only three years. In at least 10 years. At least. Seven to 10. At least. I agree. So you're right. The system is just straight flawed. It's just, you know, it's never going to be fair. But could we at least get a 60-40? Because we still, we was in an 80-20, now we barely in a 70-30, the way things are look are handled. It's, it's never going to be higher than that the way it feels, which is just straight BS. But that's how it is. Yeah, afraid so. All right, listen, everybody, as always, thanks for listening in. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up, that like button. We need that. Break that YouTube algorithm. Make sure that you look us up on Instagram and or Facebook. Also, stay positive, stay blessed. Uh, I'm out. Kevin, close it down. All right. Y'all have a good one. Um, I did it in a minute. Uh, I'll say this real quick. If you haven't, and this for you too, uh, old man, Silk Sonic is a good CD to have in your Heard collection. that. It is wonderful. It's a, it, good, it's a throwback album. Yes, it's a 70s, 80s vibe. Although I don't care for the up-tempo track, but they're not bad. They're listenable. They're doable. They're typical 80s you know, style upbeat. I like they slow music. They slow songs better. They got a song after last night or after tonight, whatever it's called. That and Blast Off, I words can't express how those are some songs you should play at a certain time, is all I'm gonna say. But um, if you don't have it, stream it, get it, download it, whatever you do, you won't be disappointed. Uh, after that, hey, winter time coming. Bundle up, it's about to be cold in the motherfucker in this up in this area. Yep. Y'all be easy. We holler at y'all. All right. Good night, everybody.